and also we have Sarah Winder here playing power. That was close. Close, yeah? We didn't have. We didn't have. My bad. We didn't have. Why didn't house actually exist? Okay. I for the longest time thought that they were uh, a thing. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. <laughs> Next we have Lindsay Seidel! Last but no means least, we have Ryan Colt Levy! So we have Aki, Power, Pochita, and Denji on stage. What's up, everybody? And a lovely crowd of lovelies in front of us. How about that? I'm excited. So, guys, is this your first time in the UK? Yep. yep. No. Oh, it's, no. It's, it's my first time in London. Okay, yeah. okay. Wow, well, welcome to London. Thank you, my hometown. So hometown. Yeah, hometown of London. Well, you know, we've got, the, we've got the, the people here, the public here to welcome you here, and we're excited. So, guys, come on, make more noise. Uh, I have to say, it's been an absolutely extraordinary weekend. You guys have turned up with such incredible energy and enthusiasm and kindness and just generosity. It's been so beautiful. Thank you for making this experience really special. So guys, how, I'm excited, because I'm an actor myself. So, when you guys given the role of Pochita, Denji, Power, Aki, how did you guys find the minutiae, the voice of these particular characters? Because I read comics all the time, so when I read the comics, I'm there reading it out loud. I read it. I don't know why I do this, but I just, like, for example, if I'm playing like, like an evil villain, I'd go, hello, Spider-Man, catch you. Or if it's something very, you know, weak and meaningless, they go, no, don't kill me. I make all these type of voices in my head and also predicting that loud. But how do you guys find the path to find the voice for your particular characters? It's coming. <laughs> So, uh, good morning to you all. Um, it's kind of instinctual, honestly. Uh, it's just uh, you, you just kind of look at the character and you uh, pay attention especially to uh, the words that they say because uh, that's kind of an underrated thing for uh, a lot of beginner actors. They don't really realize how much you can intuit about a, a character's personality from you know, their word choices. Um, so uh, there was that, and I just kind of remembered what it was like to be uh, a teenager who uh, didn't uh, have a lot of uh, experience expressing his emotions very much, and uh, it often came out as uh, violent anger, and uh, I got kicked in the genitals a lot, so, uh, and I deserved it. Um, <laughs> that's just me, though. <laughs> I'll probably be sit down. <laughs> Uh, I personally have about 30 years of experience of being an annoying little sister, and so I just, I find that energy, and then I gravel into it and be more gremlin, and that's power. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, similarly to what Reagan said, um, I don't really have a process uh, when it comes to coming up with a character's voice. Um, by the way, this is not what I normally sound like. I am recovering from She normally some... sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recovering from some laryngitis, but anyway, um, yeah, it's kind of something that I just uh, intuit, you know, we're for um, uh, auditions, usually uh, we are provided with an image of what the character looks like, um, along with uh, some background on the character that gives us some insight into who they are and why they are the way that they are. Um, and then we have some dialogue and I read all of that. I look at the, the image or images that we're given and I'm just like, 
imagine that I am the character and whatever comes out is what comes out. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of us um, tend to just like look at an image and uh, we kind of like have an idea of yeah. what to do with that. Yeah, like, I, this person could sound like this and we run with it. Voice actor just sort of do funny voices all the time just to uh, just to annoy our parents and so uh, we just translate that into a career. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not really dissimilar from what they're saying. A lot of it, um, I mean, it is intention. You know, a lot of the times it's it's the words that are not being said through the words that are being said. Um, sometimes it is, you know, if you if you are able to read a story like the Chainsaw Man, I had read the whole thing before I ever got to audition for it. So I had a really strong idea of who Denji was and all the different kind of stages of evolution that he emotionally was going to go through that we haven't even fully really touched on in the show, you know? Um, but I knew that in the beginning he was coming from a much more, you know, broken and like, I, I, I call him like a crumpled piece of paper because he's so scrunched up and small and, and scooped out. And um, as he kind of finds himself more confident in, you know, finding himself in the world, there's looseness and a brashness and a kind of rough edge that comes out more because he's able to kind of find some confidence in that cockiness and there's an exploration to it. But a lot of the time when you get an audition for something, sometimes they will, they will like, overload you with information to the point where you think oh well this is what they want because this is what they're asking for and a lot of the time that's the wrong thing because they have an idea based on what they're looking at as casting directors or whatever and usually that means they're going to get 20 30 40 50 100 of almost the exact same kind of read if people are going okay you want this kind of character with this layout this is what his backstory is this is what you're asking of me it almost all the time gets the same thing, whereas if you just inherently look at a character and go, what is, what is my interpretation of this? Where am I coming from with this? If you threw me in this life scenario, how would I adapt to it? What would be my emotional response? Just because a line, you know, maybe uh, asking for, uh, like it being yelled out, maybe you whisper it because that's more where the intensity comes from. It's, it's those kinds of choices that you define who the character is, and sometimes that's what gets you the job, because someone hears and go, oh, that's who they are. So a big part of it is just kind of really trusting your gut, because the percentage of booking any role is so slim that either way, you know, you may as well put in your version of it instead of the one that, you know, you think they want. Show them, show them your heart. That was a long answer, I'm sorry. But it was a really good one. <laughs> Hey. I like that. I like that response. I like that honesty for all you guys as well. I like where you, how you guys find the process of the characters because it's not too far from actually physical acting because you're typically art acting in the movie. No, if anything, it's, that, yeah. that's that's so much of what it is. I mean, in in some ways, it's it's a more challenging version of it because when you're physically acting, you know, you may have marks or lighting or things you have to hit and. There are certain elements that may be technical that are different, but with a voiceover performance, you need to find a way to make all of that physicality be heard and felt without being seen. And there's a big difference. You know, you can hear when someone is just saying something versus really feeling that and, and feeling their way through it. So, you know, you it, I wish we were able to film ourselves during these sessions, especially for shows like this where there's so much, you know, physicality because you really like in the fight scenes we're swinging around like they're yeah. we're sweaty and gross in these sessions like we have to we really all of our it. entire body <laughs> i recently played a character um that was like the main baddie of this ghostbusters game and he's this giant pumpkin head and he's got this really gross kind of like the note that we kept going off of in the in the session was they just be like more wet just make it more wet and I was like okay and it was just like gross and spitty and monstrous and it was just this like this give and take of a balance of just kind of finding this insanity in a character and like that playground of just being able to be vulnerable and nuts is like where you want to be so what is the most challenging scene or in, okay, in Chainsaw Man, what is the most challenging scene you guys had 
so far in the season that we've seen? For me, it was uh, the hospital scene. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, uh, as I said, I am a person who sometimes has a hard time uh, expressing and being open and vulnerable with my emotions, and so uh, I, I have never uh, successfully, you know, actually broke down crying for uh, an acting role before, uh, but I uh, was able to do it for that, um, partially because I knew that, um, uh, well, I had this feeling that, uh, you know, that Mike was going to fire you. That Mike was going to fire me, yeah. Um, <laughs> Kidding. This uh, sense that um, somebody needs to really hear Aki cry. Like, they need to know that somebody like that can still feel things. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes it feels like, am I actually a human being, you know? And so um, that vulnerability needed to be there. And so it was very difficult. Um, and you have to go to places in your mind that... Uh, honestly, we do so much in our lives to avoid going to, um, but it was a really rewarding, really cleansing thing to do, and uh, once it was over, uh, I was like, hey, uh, you okay, you know, all that, and I was like, yeah, yeah I'm good, and so he was like, hey, do you want to see Power and Denji die a lot? <laughs> yes, yes, I do! <laughs> so that was great. <laughs> um. I'm gonna be honest, um, I wasn't sure what word it was that you said about a scene. Was it hardest or? Yeah, like, yeah, the most, uh, a, cha a real challenging scene that you have done so far in uh, Chainsaw Man. Okay, um, let's Answering see. this question. Answering this question. Because um, it seems like me from where I see Howard just having fun all the way through, you're laughing aloud, you're emotions. Yeah, um, I would say, the, the hardest thing I had was when I had to uh, beat the crap out of Denji's face <laughs> um, because he was losing it um, and I had to say heal like eight times and in a specific cadence and for a specific length and very loudly um, and we had to get it just right that we did it like at least eight times and I was like I think I'm good, I'm good. I need some tea, that's the one is that good? <laughs> the hard swallowing. <laughs> but, um, did I answer that right? <laughs> Very good, Sarah. You get more Sarah snacks later. <laughs> what about you, Lynn? Uh, Was it that? For sure. <laughs> most challenging, um, partially because sadly we don't get to see Pochita all that much, um, but I know that I certainly felt um, a lot of pressure um, for, you know, Pochita's uh, famous line of, I'll give you my heart in exchange. Show me your dreams. That one. <laughs> Aww. Uh, but because I knew that that was, you know, that was going to be a very important uh, line, but... Uh, if so, he knew what Denji's dreams really were going to be, <laughs> would he still have signed up? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you guys were right. Yeah, you, could, you couldn't hear that in the line with me. <laughs> I think for me it was um, it, the Leech Devil fight episode w was literally just like screaming and manic insanity for like the entire episode. So that was like three sessions of me just like going completely bonkers and going fully just like emptying the tank in every way. Um, and there was one particular line in... I think it was episode nine, either eight or nine, where um, it was just this one really long scream where I had to hold out this one word while I was like going to attack Katana Man. And it was really surprising how much harder like screaming for like nine whole seconds is when you actually have to do it and count it out. And you're like, oh no, I can do that. And then you realize it is so exhausting. 
and then you do one that's like just too short, and you're like, okay, I'll get the next time. And then you go like too long, and then you're like, okay, well I can get it again. And then you're already out of breath, so you're like, give me five minutes, and then I'll come back and hit this thing. But it is, it's so interesting how like, mm -hmm. your physical limitations, even just how much rest you get on a given day, how hydrated you are, like, there are so many things to physically prepare yourself for, for just being able to do the job. You know, it's it's kind of fascinating. And knowing your body is really important. But as far as like emotional challenging, um, the, the entire first episode was just so deeply special and cathartic. And um, Denji's murder was actually the scene that was the most like, crucial for me to get right because it had to be horrific and and brutal and upsetting and we did a few takes of that and then I was like okay I think I got it and I, I felt good about it and we finished that session and I left and I was like oh crap my mom's gonna watch that <laughs> <laughs> okay it just so if you guys had to make a contract with a devil what would it be and why I have the, the lame obvious answer because I'm a total coffee junkie, so I would just sign up with the coffee devil. You saw you sign up with the coffee devil? 100%. Where does your coffee come out of? What are you agreeing to with the coffee devil? I mean, anything for that caffeine, whatever he wants. Okay. Anything? Yeah, whatever he needs. Yo. Okay. That sweet bean juice. Where does the coffee come out of the devil? Oh, we don't, we don't know. Yes. We don't know. <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk about that. It doesn't yeah. matter. The more, it's better to not know, right? Was it, it, was it gonna be like the, the bat devil's girlfriend type situation? No, okay. <laughs> okay, so coffee devil, and you literally do anything for that contract. Hmm. That's very questionable. <laughs> what about you? Uh, nap devil? The nap devil. <laughs> I'm a mom would that, would that allow and you really tired. <laughs> would it allow you to nap or would so, you make other people so, nap? So the Ooh, nap well, both. So the nap devil, and what would you give to, as an offer to the contract? So the, for the, the devil? God, I'd give anything. Anything? anything. For a nap? What's, 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 what's anything? It must be something, you know, you sacrifice. Alright, yeah, no, I'll, I'll think of a specific thing, because like, I feel like... What do I, what do I like, what would I be willing to give up like on my body or something? Could like, you know, like, finger, like my, my, uh, my pinky that. toes. I don't need my pinky toes. You could have my pinky toes. Pinky toes. <laughs> yeah. Listen, the coffee devil's not that strong, right? He could have my pinky toes. Depends on how long you're brewing for. You don't need it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't, I mean, like, yeah. what do you need it for? Yeah, he, he could find some use for them. Okay, so your pinky toe for the coffee devil, the nut devil, Fair and trend. literally anything with the nut devil, yeah? That's very questionable. Okay, well, actually, what if it's like of them, you have no eyebrows? No, no, I need those. <laughs> <laughs> like you could draw them on every day, but like that's like you get to no, nap. No, no. You that's get to obvious. nap. Here's the thing: like you can nap whatever you want. Like you're on a long flight, you can no, nap for the whole flight, eyebrows. but your eyebrows gotta go. Okay, so it will be your eyebrows that you're sacrificing. Going once, going twice. <laughs> so eyebrows. Okay, go. Cool. What about you? Maybe the cat devil? The cat devil? So I can be surrounded by cats at all times? That would be pretty cool. And what you, would you be sacrificing for the great, for the devil to contract? To, well, what to wouldn't I sacrifice? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Well, that's down to you. Your room has to be the litter box. My what? Your room has to be the litter box. Yes. It's, it's just all sand. Just sand. <laughs> and don't forget the poo poo. <laughs> I've got cats, um, yeah. Uh, okay. How am I just noticing your sweater? That's so awesome. Just look at the back. Did you guys did you guys get a look at this? Look at the back. That is so good. Yes. Cool. When I first got this jump on this what this hoodie, I was so gassed. I go, yeah, Michael, here you go. I've had this for a year. It's so cool. I get so nerdy about all this stuff. Like anytime I see Chainsaw Man merch or any like now that it's getting more out in the wild, it's really trippy, and like friends too, that even if they have no frame of reference for the show, they're just like so enthusiastic about the fact that like I'm in it or any of us are in it, and we'll get text message from people. Like my mom, first of all, she's watched the whole show, so she's, we call her Chainsaw Mom, but she <laughs> will like, she's back in New York, and I live in Los Angeles, and like, I would say, if not like bi-weekly, 
there was like at some point I get a text where she's like, I saw a kid wearing a Chainsaw Man shirt and I went up to him and I told him that my son voice is Denji. Or she'll like take you know a picture of like like herself at a toy store with a Pochita plush. Like she's just so jacked on this and it is so trippy being able to like see it all out in the wild. I walked past a Hot Topic recently and I was like, we're just like in the window. It's crazy. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, we get like. You guys got off topic. Let me ask Regan what he's gonna make his sacrifice with the devil. Oh wait, I'm I'll trying to save him. Trying to help him, give him I, time, more time to think oh, about. Oh, yes. I still need to think about it. Yet. Well, yeah, I think I would. I would contract with the devil that a lot of people would underestimate, that people would not expect to be as powerful as they are. So I'm gonna go with the deadline devil. Deadline devil. <sighs> and okay. for that, I would sacrifice the last shreds of my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> he fought this through. He fought this through. We gave him time. Okay, so since Chainsaw Man's been out and everything, I've noticed that one of my friends have gave me like, a Pucha, Puchita plushie. And I went, what am I going to do with this? She goes, oh, it's nice and cute, Michael. I thought of you. And I was like, thanks. Couldn't get me like one of the action figurines or anything? <laughs> no, I saw this and it was really cute. And I was like, uh. So how does it feel to be the most wow, cutest <laughs> character in the anime currently next to Pikachu? <laughs> um, it's a dream come true. <laughs> it is, and you're asking, what do I do with this? What do you mean? You love it. No, no, no. you give all the toes. Especially, he's at home, and every single time I'm on my chair, I sit with it. I, well, See, well, that, that's what I was gonna say. Is it's like it's like when like the tough dad is like, I don't want a dog, and then you see them with like you know the dog <laughs> everywhere, like you know, that's what they. That question, yeah. Has made it through for some uncomfortable times for me. When I'm like come from boxing classes, and I'm sore and I can't sit down properly. Poor teachers just there. Like, oh, thank you. Do you guys have a comfort pochita at home? Because I feel like everybody should Everyone have one. Like one. Yeah. security blanket. Yeah. I, I literally, because I have I have one like in my apartment, and I have a few in my apartment, like in different sizes. <laughs> When I, whenever I leave for a convention for the weekend, I, I tell them to watch the place for me. I'm always like, Rochita, you look out for the spot. Have them on guard at every corner of every room. <laughs> it's like your own little elf on the shelf. Exactly. Yeah. Do, they, do they move and then you're like... If they do, they don't like me to know about it. It's like a real Toy Story thing where like, who knows what's going on there right now. It could be a house party. But then when I get home, they're like... <laughs> I have a little crocheted one that's inside of a, one of my little uh, wall pockets, like a little organizer things. And he's like this, and my right above my bed. <laughs> they made one recently. I don't know if you guys saw because they're like always making new versions of him as plushies, and they made one that's the crying one. Yeah. Like the forever crying one. I haven't one. seen that it's one. It's so adorable. I want it. <laughs> like I want it. <laughs> now don't you want it? I need it. <laughs> Give me. So, since now Chainsaw Man's out, and he's been out for what, almost a year now? Like yeah, which is so wild. That's crazy. Yeah. And you guys go to conventions and everything. What is the cosplay that's really blown you away, or taking, or taking your breath away that you see? Yesterday. You know, oh we saw, I, I will not spoil in, in grand detail, but we saw yesterday the most extraordinary uh, Kind of ultimate forms of uh, of Denji and of power that were absolutely mind blowing. I mean, yeah, but in so general, I mean, it was. I, see the, I I have to say though, in general, I mean, the Chainsaw Man cosplayers that we've seen throughout from across the world, you know, uh, across the country, it has been so cool seeing the ingenuity, the personality. Because even if everyone's making the same helmet, they're making it with their own, you know, different bits and bobs and tools or their own personalities put into it. The shape might be different. There's an accent to it. It's a flavor that's like just so unique and individualized. And I freak out every time. I see, I see something like a couple of you guys out there in the audience. It's like every time I see one, I just, I geek out. I will never get over it. Same. I always get so excited seeing any cosplay of any character in the show. It's we were we were talking about uh, there's there's a um, inflatable pochita yeah like like the giant dinosaurs that people wear the T Rexes like they make pochitas oh, like yeah. that so you can you can literally find them like and once we were doing a panel recently and halfway through the panel the doors open and it, there's like just this giant pochita and it's like trying to sneak in into the back and sit down and like <laughs> like really you think you're gonna just incognito <laughs> and then we're just like pochita. Oh, jeez, they got the whole place. Sad, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it was legendary. 
you don't have to rub it out. <laughs> was the greatest day of my life. <laughs> End mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you guys could play any character in the world of Chainsaw Man, what character would you guys like to play besides the character you guys already played? Yeah, if we had it, yeah. Might as well. I want to play Bochita. <laughs> I want to do it like this. <laughs> okay. And I want to play Denji like this. Denji, show me your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here is some boobies. What do you got? Oh, whatever. All right. You know what? You got a contract, buddy. <laughs> hey, it's it's not more like a Hollywood producer. Than I know, right? <laughs> Listen, that's why I didn't get the role. I, I auditioned for Pochita, and um, like I said, you know, you put your spin on it. Sometimes it doesn't work. I saw him, and I said, you know, he looks like he's just—he's got to sit down here. He's really got yeah, just like there's a real East Coast kind of like old school flavor to him. He likes to have an egg cream and, uh, you know, a BLT. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of love that for him. <laughs> we'll have to redub the scene and just gotta the trolls, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait for the Blu-ray. Yeah. <laughs> do, the, do the wolf. Ryan's cut. <laughs> Bark. <laughs> Kobani for me. Oh, yeah. I love all of her screaming lines. So good. Yeah. Uh, probably Kishibe. I think he's a uh, oh. you know, wonderful character. Jason Douglas is just uh, absolutely astounding as him. Mm -hmm. so it was, but uh, if I just uh, if I could just uh, get some piano wire around his neck, uh, then that'd be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. This is a this is a friend. This is a question from my brother. He make, make he goes he, he went to me. Make sure Michael, you answer. You make sure you answer this question. I went okay, cool. He goes no, do it, you do it. I went or else. Uh, literally, he's like I've been oh, thinking about this for a really long time, and I need you to free me. With me. He goes Michael, you answer that question. I go I haven't left it yet. <laughs> like I will get there. He goes. So the question is this: Are you guys team Makama or team Power? Why are you even asking? Yeah. <laughs> like, obviously, power. Well, you know, don't know what you're asking, though. You don't know what you're asking. When, when you're asking that question, what what exactly? Because that could infer a lot of things. It just means, it. are you talking about, like, is this a shipping kind of thing? Like, where's his, what is his angle? Well, no, well no, my brother told me to ask this question. Ask, oh, I know. Do you know what? You got to tell him it's too vague. Okay, well, if it's shipping, then no. There's, there's too much context to, to have. I, I, you know, I mean, I, I think both characters are so deeply compelling for different reasons, but I do not want to say certain things that may spoil okay. for people who are not. Away. There's, yeah. there's a lot of, yeah. Uh, I, I like them both. It's hard to pick. All uh, right, you know one of them ones. You know the boring one. Neutral. Boring one. If you, you guys heard it first. If the, if the uh, what is it, the coffee devil had to make you choose, what would you pick? All right, I'll pick power. <laughs> Only because she would probably mess all the prints off my table when we leave. The <laughs> She'd just like kick out one of the legs Susie's on it. Susie's not here. So yeah, exactly. Susie's not here. She power. won't. Mess I'm just trying to replace. Me. Nobody tell Susie. <laughs> so I was going with power yet? Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm a Lib Dem voter, but. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, y'all get bad. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm hip. I'm a... uh, no, definitely power. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we would agree instead. Team Power. Cool. 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 No. Team Power for today. Power. Yes. I'm happy with that. So my next question is: Are you? Would you choose to be a, a devil or a human? And if you choose to be a devil, what devil would it be? You know what? Honestly, I'm sticking with human. It's it's hard enough as it is this way. I feel like being a devil just really complicates things. Plus, like the whole the whole like even if you die and then you come back, it's just a lot of I don't need to die multiple times. It's just like you know, I'll just do a one and done. Let's just ride this out. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. <laughs> like a lot. And then and then having to make contracts with people to like even just get around and do stuff like. There's, you don't get your free agency that way, you know? So I feel like, at least as a human, you, you have your own individual life. Okay. Or at least the illusion of one. Yeah, we're all, we're all slaves to the machine, aren't we? 
So human over here. Yeah, human. Human Kawa over here. Oh, Sarah, I'm sorry. So you just call you Kawa now. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really I do agree with them. Like, it'd be nice to not be evil for a change. Uh, actually, That's the I other think, thing, is if you're a devil, like, good. you're being hunted actively <laughs> all the time. Like, you can't just be like, I'm going to 7-Eleven, you know, like... Yeah, like, it doesn't seem that fun. <laughs> I'll be a devil. I'll be a vegetable. You know what the safest thing to be in this universe is? Uh, in a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing bad ever happens to cats. Whoa, 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 back up. <laughs> Think about meowing now. <laughs> Listen, meowing turned out fine in the end. My my cat was enslaved. <laughs> a brief <laughs> vacation wild. inside a bat. And then eaten. Yes. She <laughs> you, you, you turned out okay. Yeah. So you be a devil. What type of devil would you be? Oh, um. <laughs> I would be a coming up with things on the fly devil, <laughs> the improv devil. <laughs> so Sarah, who are you? What devil would you be? Are you gonna be a human? Oh, um, let's see. Uh, what's a good one? Hmm. Existential crisis devil. Wow. Wow. You just show up in front of people, and be like, huh? huh? What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> you become like a cryptid for men in their 50s, just... Yeah. <laughs> hey, how's your life been going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll pick an electric devil. I'll pick, I'll actually be in a cat as well. So it'll be a, a technical electric cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a good life. Yeah, very dangerous though, but yeah, cool. And I, I also have... I just wanna life. be a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so do you have any questions for the audience? Anyone from the audience who have any questions? Um, if, I, if I could, just real quick, sorry, this won't take long. Um, sure. We uh, premiered uh, this thing uh, a year ago at New York Comic Con, um, and I had some remarks to prepare for you know the, the one year anniversary, but unfortunately we didn't get a panel at that uh, oh. event, thank you. Um, but yeah. I just wanted to uh, just run through them real quick, um, so I'll just uh, here we go. Go ahead, go ahead, Reagan. Uh, after a full year of being on this wonderful whirlwind journey, I can't help but think of the people who have made it the absolute best days of my life and what it was like meeting these fine folks who I've looked up to, uh, in a figurative sense, and seen in a new light with their talents, passions, and everything that makes them world-class in every sense of the word. Uh, Ryan, I've told you this before, but when I first found I was in the cast, I was uh, terrified beyond anything I could have imagined, but knowing that you'd be on this ride with me made all of my worries seem small and distant, and meeting you in person just uh, confirmed all of my wonderful pre preconceptions of you. Uh, your charm, thoughtfulness, and extraordinary heart shine through in all of our meetings and morning coffee walks. Uh, although I did think it was a bit odd how after we saw Beetlejuice on Broadway, you insisted we go to Mr. Beast Burger together. Uh, then you broke apart your burger like we were the Lion King, smeared the special sauce across my forehead, saying, Ah, key. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, you've been pretty cool. Uh, Sarah, you and your utterly infectious energy is absolutely irreplaceable in our little family, which you've made yourself the infinitely lovable little sister in. I remember when I first saw you, the way your eyes lit up, and I reached out my hand to shake yours, and you caught my wrist in your teeth and performed a death roll. <laughs> It tore my hand clean off, but as I sat there in the emergency room and you held my severed hand in your mouth, your, your big puppy dog eyes seemed to say a million homophobic slurs. XOXO. Go off, queen. <laughs> Lindsay. Lindsay. We met just a couple days ago, and uh, Susie's not here, so you get hers. <laughs> Lindsay. That makes me feel so good. <laughs> the regal and compassionate energy you have for your friends and your work is truly something to behold and aspire to, which makes it a bit strange how when I first met you at Sound Cadence Studios when you were an audio engineer, you were chewing Doritos into the company keyboard. Uh, you didn't have to hand me a cheese dust stained bottle of lean either, but you did, and I've loved you for it ever since. I am so confused. Well, wait, what are you- You should be. Wait. And then there's our dear director, <laughs> Mike McFarland, who has the power to fire me. Now, obviously, every story I've told is as meaningful as it is true, but no retelling could ever compare to the reality. 
that I get to keep living this dream with each of you. And I wouldn't trade any of you nor any of these lovely folks here with us for the whole world. Thank you. Wow. Oh, we love you, buddy. Wow. That was extraordinary.